was that he lasted as long as he did. He was 36 years old. The bizarro world, Liberty Valance. Jim and Stewart in reverse. A man whose reality has scorched the myth. Stories of him being beaten up by fans, by cops, by rednecks who came to his gigs just to kick the shit out of him were legends. But no matter how many tales were told of success, the violence, the bloodshed, the onstage suck jobs, they could never approach the very real white knuckle fear and bad vibes that were the byproducts of his shows. Yeah, playing with Gigi, I had my own life threatened many times. One night in Raleigh, some pissed off rap boys followed us to our motel with baseball bats. And beyond the broken glass, Gigi adhered to a cogent philosophy of rock and roll. Rock and roll is creator, rock and roll is destroyer. He was everything my power warned you about. Fuck phonies like Lou Reed. Gigi Allen was the rock and roll animal. And he believed it with his heart. And he believed it with his soul. And despite his constant threats to kill himself on stage, man, he reveled in it. He loved it. He loved it. saw him was maybe a year before he died. I was hosting a rooftop barbecue. It was a pleasant afternoon. Gigi and I were wearing aprons and silly chef hats, flipping burgers and drinking beer. He asked me if I wanted to be on the guest list for the show the next day, and I told him I wasn't going. We're having a nice time, I said. It was really good to see you. Why would I want to ruin that vibe by going to one of your gigs? He laughed. Yeah, he told me. You're probably right. Obviously, uh, we should probably explain the G.G. Allen connection. You guys were, uh, I guess, in, in the same regard that anyone could have been friends with uh, G.G. Allen. You were uh, friends with G.G. Allen. Yeah, um, we, we were friends. I counted him as a friend um, and vice versa. I don't know how many people he really knew that... Um, he had a uh, normal <laughs> friendship sort of relationship with, but um, it was a degree of mutual respect between us. Uh, I mean, he'd stay at my house all the time. There was never any problems. And I know people have this idea of Gigi, uh, which is largely correct, by the way, that um, he was out of control and um, dangerous. And uh, like I said, uh, the, only, the only man uh, where the, uh, the, the man outshined the myth, like Liberty Valance in reverse, um, because he was capable of doing anything. I mean, there was a guy who was not afraid to die and felt no pain. He was ab absolutely um, a wild animal. But uh, beneath all of that, he was pretty, could be pretty, pretty damn charming when he felt like it. And he was pretty funny and very smart guy. And we had very similar taste in music. He went for Hank Williams and uh, the New York Dolls and the Rolling Stones and blues and country music over um, you know, the prevalent thrash bands of the day. Uh, and we, we, uh, we both like to drink Jim Beam a lot. Hmm. So uh, we, we got along all right. We got along just fine. I wrote a very long story about him for Screw Magazine. I think it was probably the only time anyone ever took him seriously as an artist. Um, I think that impressed him. And after that, he had invited me to join his band, which <laughs> seemed like a good idea at the time. <laughs> E.G. had a death wish. Uh, There's no question about it. And he always said he was going to die on stage in the ultimate rock and roll death, and he was going to take a few people with him. And um, the story... Uh, like I sing in the song, um, last time I saw him, you know, we were just having a very pleasant afternoon, just sort of like uh, having a rooftop barbecue. And he said to me, you know, you coming to my gig tomorrow? And I was like, you know, absolutely fucking not. You know, we're having a nice time. And tomorrow's going to be, you know, bad vibes from start to finish. Why would I, why, why would I want that? Because right. um, that's what it was with Gigi, you know. People would book him and say, some kid, there's always some young Turk, who would say, I'm going to make my bones booking Gigi Allen. It was going to be the wildest show that Greensboro or, or, you know, or Hoboken has ever seen. And the second the show would start, they'd regret that. Mm. Um, besides that, like I said, though, Gigi, you know, he knew what he was doing. You know, he, he was very in control of his own charisma. And he was very self-aware.